الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا وسندنا وشفيعنا محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتكون أياما معدودات صدق الله العظيم اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وأمته أجمعين الحمد لله the month of Ramadan is upon us and we are upon it and the reason I titled this talk first falling into Ramadan because I think in reality both as individuals but also as a global ummah we found ourselves in such a state of heartache and heartbreak and at an individual level perhaps many of us were caught up in despair and sadness and grief and as in every year we were probably generally spiritually declining since the previous year's Ramadan and I always feel and I always used to imagine Ramadan al-Mubarak like this, that it's catching me. Otherwise, I would have been falling into the endless abyss of my own ghafla of heedlessness and mindlessness. Some of us may have been falling into an abyss of sin. Some of us were falling into an abyss of grief, some type of bottomless pit of sorrow or loneliness. And every single year, no matter how bad we are, no matter how bad the ummah is, no matter how ungrateful the ummah is, no matter how disunited the ummah is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, out of His infinite, limitless, boundless mercy, sends upon us yet again another month of Ramadan, an entire month of Ramadan, the same Ramadan that came and was witnessed by Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam and all of his noble and beloved companions. May Allah ta'ala be pleased with them all. That same Ramadan, that same one and only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sending his same rahmah and mercy, his same hidayah and guidance and blessings on all of us in this month of Ramadan. What's different is us, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unchanging, timeless, eternal being. Ramadan as full of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's limitless mercy and guidance. The difference is you and me. So that's a difference that we can make. That's what's in our ikhtiyar, our khiyar. That's in our range. That's in our potential. That's in our sphere of influence. What am I going to bring to Ramadan? And the first thing actually what it is, I say that in the beginning and I'm, you know, Obviously, mashallah, if there's somebody who's very super religious, super muttaki already, then they don't need to talk like this, right? They're already flying just in the first few days of nights of Ramadan. But for the rest of us, the first thing I would say is just fall. Just fall deep into Ramadan and let Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy envelop you, overwhelm you. Try to feel, right? And this is what happens in this month, one very important lesson of this month is you and I are going to witness things, witness things that are unseen, that are non-empirical, that lie far beyond the can of science, that can never be examined through any type of resonance imaging or any type of microscope. We're going to experience in our heart, in our spiritual heart, in our ruh, in our very core of our true human self, the mercy and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will feel a closeness, a qurb, a nearness with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That nearness is indescribable. That nearness is intangible. That nearness is not empirical. But that nearness, it's that nearness. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the very first night and the very first fast. Right, the very first pang of hunger, the very first moment of thirst, or even I say the first night, even the very first niyyah, the very first intention we made for that first fast for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that we turned away from our worldly routine, our worldly life, we turned towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we were in anticipation of Ramadan, you will inshallah, I'm sure all of us have already felt this at some level, a feeling in our heart 
of awareness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of yaqeen, of certainty in His existence, our very iman becomes ignited and renewed and revived in this month because we do this ultimate act of iman, a pillar, which is the fourth fast of Ramadan. And you know, not every one of us has been on Hajj yet. Not every one of us is going to go on Hajj this year. Some of us may not even have zakat mandated upon us, right? And all of us know the condition of our farth prayers, our obligatory prayers throughout the year. Nonetheless, Allah subhanahu wa sent Ramadan upon us. Now, one thing I, to help you capture this unseen aspect of Ramadan, I'm going to give you an analogy, a metaphor. And it's something I very deeply believe in. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our deen has made some special places like, for example, Baytullah, Kaaba, like the road that the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Madinat Manawara, like Baytul Muqaddas, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rescue them and protect them. And we'll can mention more of them soon, inshallah. And I want you to imagine like what would be the most incredible thing, right? You could be at the Kaaba, the most sacred place, or you're at Multazam. For those of you who know it, the Multazam is the place where you cling. Literally, you paste yourself, right? And you cling to the Kaaba. Or, and I don't think any of us have had that honor and privilege, but it's also something, a unique, rare privilege that somebody might get to go inside the Kaaba. Now, I just want you to think, how would you spend your time if I just pasted you on the Multazam? Or I opened the door of Baytullah and you actually were able to go inside in the inner chamber, the interior of the Kaaba. You'd say, I'm in the most incredible space and place in the world. Just like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created special, blessed, spiritual places, just like that, exactly like that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created special times. Their special makan and their special zaman. And Ramadan al-Mubarak is a special time. So I want you to imagine that you're existing inside this time, this sacred, blessed month of Ramadan. All right? I want you to imagine that these 29 days and nights or 30 days and nights, you will feel as if you felt that you were inside the Kaaba, as if you were inside Baytullah, surrounded by the Kaaba, immersed in the sacred place, exactly like that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has immersed you in me in the sacred blessed time of the month of Ramadan. And for those of us who work and you're in the hospital or the clinic or you're doing the rounds, it's something you will carry inside of you and you'll actually be amazed that the people around you, right, the non-Muslims, they're unaware of this reality. Just imagine like it's bright, like imagine physically, it's bright sunlight outside and people don't realize and they don't feel the warmth of the sun. They don't feel the heat of the sun. They don't feel the light of the sun. They're unable to bask in the sun. Not only are they unaware of it, it's as if they're in complete darkness. Now the spiritual equivalent of that is that you're just being aware, your very shu'ur, your very awareness and consciousness that this is the month of Ramadan. And I, alhamdulillah, bi fadlillah, due to the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, am existing in this special sacred time, in a state of iman, with belief and faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and in a state of niyyah, in a state of intention, that I'm going to fast for the sake of Allah. This is unseen. This, all of this is an unseen reality. Right? Nobody can, no, no other person can understand that this, what this month is. And our own fast is also entirely unseen. And as I mentioned earlier when we started, the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His nearness to us and His mercy and guidance upon us is unseen. Now, just to do shukr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a moment and hamd to be grateful to Him and to praise and exalt Him as only He can be praised. He all praise. Alhamdulillah means all praises are for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It also means praise itself befits only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That He gave you and me the tawfiq and the ability to have yet another month of Ramadan.
So now, what did I say? We bring ourselves. Don't think right now. Don't go tough on yourself that I'm bringing my soiled self, dirty self. Yes, sometimes it's good to be self incrementary Just think that, Ya Allah, you are my Rabb. Anta Rabbi. Wa ana abduk. And I'm your slave and servant. I'm your worshipful slave. You know me. And despite knowing everything about me, you still gave me tawfiq to enter this month of Ramadan. Just this gift, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I want to fall deeper and deeper and deeper into this sacred time. Now, I'm going to mention two things. right? One is for... But before I do that, right? I, let me talk about one of the key aspects of Ramadan. There are two key aspects of Ramadan. The first is taqwa. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Allah subhanahu wa Quran actually mentions the reason why He mandated fasting so that we would be more deeply consciously aware of Him and that awareness of Him, that greater and constant awareness of Him which includes love for Him, fear of Him, knowledge of Him, worship to Him, obedience to Him, hope in Him, trust in Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala would lead us to live a pious, virtuous, righteous life for ourselves, for our families, for our communities, for our societies, and for the whole ummah, and for all of humanity. All of that, that 15-20 word sentence I gave you is taqwa, right? So just like the you know dollar is strong and you trade one dollar, you get 300 of another currency, Arabic language is strong. You say one super strong word like taqwa, you need about 20, 30 words in English. And even that will begin to capture the shade and the nuance and the tenor of this word. لَعَلَّكُمْ So that happily you might, perhaps you may finally, in the hope that yet you may, تَتَّقُونَ Finally become people of taqwa. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a hope for us. So the first thing we have to bring to this month is to hope for the same thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hoped for us. So uh, Ramadan is not just a month of fasting. Ramadan is the month of taqwa, right? Fasting is not the goal. Fasting is the means. And a lot of people make that mistake. They think that the fast, the imsak, refraining from food and drink and marital relations from dawn to sunset, that is not the goal. That is not the objective. That is a means. That is a sabab. That is a tool. That is an aid to a greater goal. And that goal is taqwa. Why? So this is a lesson for us. That when we become less materialistic, and here we're not talking about materialistic in terms of luxury and opulence. Obviously we should not do that. But the point here in this fast is when we even learn to control and sometimes suppress our most fundamental material self, the fundamental part of our humanity, the physical self, the stuff that physiologists study, right? Our matter, our material self, which needs the food and drink to continue, right? When we can learn to control that, to prioritize something else over that, to prioritize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's submission to Him, obedience to Him, worship of Him, over that, that is how taqwa takes place. That is where taqwa is to be found in activating the spiritual self. So the second thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran about Ramadan is Shahr Ramadan alladhi unzil fihi al-Qur'an that is the month in which Quran al-Kareem was recited so three things we know, it's the month of fasting, the month of taqwa, and the month of Qur'an. So fasting plus Qur'an, in other words, suppressing your material self, fasting, activating and energizing your spiritual self, Qur'an, leads to taqwa. And this is just a general principle, a general formula for us to follow, not just in this month, but our whole year, our whole life. Second major aspect of Ramadan, it is the month of hunger. It is the month of feeling empathy with the poor through hunger and is the month of charity. But you and I all know in this year, 
we can understand this in a phenomenally different way. I will tell you openly about myself. Never in my life did I understand this until I have this year. Because all of you know that our dearly beloved, not just the 30,000, are shaheed. They're ahya, they're alive with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they're looking down, smiling upon the living. But the two million who are beleaguered, who are in on the brink of starvation and famine, or at the very least are experiencing severe hunger. When you and I open our fast or start our fast or even feel hunger and thirst, it's a totally different feeling this year. And I was, you know, you know, Alhamdulillah, I, you know, everybody has a different ability in terms of how much hunger and thirst they can bear. But when I felt the first slight pang, not, I wouldn't even call it pang, right? The first slight, I don't even know what word to use, the first slight inkling of hunger, I felt so ashamed and so embarrassed because I knew I, I can just look at my clock and I can calculate how many hours and minutes are left. And I know I have a full stock of food or I have a credit card. I can go into supermarket and buy anything, right? And I thought to myself and I was sharing with my kids, just think of those people who already, even before they start, before Ramadan started, they began Ramadan in a state of hunger unlike anything me and you will feel during the whole month. That's how they begin their Ramadan, right? But alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's special rahmah and mercy is on them. And we should now realize we should feel more empathy, right? And it's not just at the hunger, it's at all affliction, all oppression, all injustice. Hunger and poverty is just a sort of a signpost, a, mar a marker, right? A placeholder for what really the empathy is supposed to be for all oppression, all injustice, all want, all need, all difficulty that this ummah is facing. And the second thing, which is charity. Yes, it is a month of charity. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give all of us more barakah in our wealth so that we may give even more charity. But it's not just charity. Again, charity is also just a placeholder. Charity means any and all forms of active engagement with the world that could repeal that oppression and injustice. So rad of the dhulm of the dhalimeen and Nusrat of the Madlumin. So yes, one way definitely is charity, right? One way is through financial contribution, donation, giving. But for some of us, it's, it's going to be the charity of our tongue, the charity of our activism, the charity of our collective action, the charity of social movements, the charity of civil society networks, the charity of writing, the charity of even just consoling others who might be feeling some level of vicarious trauma, the charity of making an intention that, Ya Allah, that so many doors are closed to help those in need today, but in the next 12 months between this Ramadan and the next Ramadan, there are going to be so many possible openings, so many opportunities. Ya Allah, I'm weak. I love my comforts. I love the safety and sanctity that you have blessed me with. I live in my own sanctuary. Ya Allah, in this month of Ramadan, I make niya, I make intention. I wish I was a surgeon. You know, I never in my life, I was always the most anti-pre-med person as an undergrad, right? But the last six months, I wish I was a surgeon. I wish I was a medic. I wish I had that ability. I wish I had that skill to provide real time, real in life, in person assistance to the oppressed and the war ravaged and the, the apartheid stricken members of our ummah. So those of you who have some ability, have some capacity, Make that dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you have strength, make the intention. If we lack that strength, we're human, we're frail, make that dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya Rabbi Kareem, give me the strength that in the next 12 months, whatever opportunities present themselves and whatever talents and abilities and skills and capabilities you and you alone, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you gifted me, that may I use that this year and every year of my life if not all of it, at least some of it, if not all the time, at least part of the time, for your sake, in your name, for your beloveds, for, for the oppressed and for the needy. 
And in that sense, some of us are capable, not all of us are capable of giving, you know, $100,000 or a million dollars in monetary charity. But some people have been blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, selected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, gifted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the ability to give another intense form of charity in kind. The two major aspects of Ramadan, right? One was the actual physical fast, which is an act of obedience and worship. And then deep connection with Qur'an, reciting Qur'an, memorizing Qur'an, feeling Qur'an. All of that to get taqwa, which was a deep awareness and consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I feel my iman in Him. I don't want to just have a mental iman. Iman is not just a mental state that I mentally profess monotheism. I want iman to be an inner state, an emotional state, a heartfelt state, a spiritual state. And that is something Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us in Ramadan. That's part of the taqwa. All right? And then to have all the attributes of the believers, tawakkul, sabr, shukr, or the Quran al is filled with adjectives. You know all these words. Sabreen, shakreen, muttaqeen, mutawakkileen, qanateen, awabeen, tawabeen. All of this is taqwa. And then the empathy part, all right, which I talked about. All right, now I want to give some practical guidance because my plan is that for each of these particular Wednesday talks uh, to try to wrap up within about 35 to have the whole talk be 35 to 45 35 minutes with a brief du'a at the end so not more than 40 minutes inshallah I prefer the longer format for those of you who are interested in more we will be giving longer talks on Saturday mornings inshallah at 11 a.m. and there are many longer talks available on the YouTube channel on Ramadan and on other topics some practical things so you know, Imam al in his Kitab al-Sawm and his book on fasting and his celebrated Ihya al-Muddin has written that a per- it's amazing, it's 900 years ago, over 900 years ago now that he wrote this, that a person should make some type of schedule, regimen for themselves, otherwise they will be idle and they will fall idle. Now if that was true for whoever he was addressing 900 plus years ago, it's true for you and me. And those of us who are university educated, those of us who are have MDs or PhDs, those of us who have no have put ourselves on a regimen, on a study schedule, studying for boards or studying for USMLE or studying for maybe some of your pre med studying for the MCAT, us you know in our field of humanities writing papers, pulling all nighters, make a schedule for yourself. Now, if, alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed you with some opportunity, I'm going to mention a schedule for that. And if your work schedule, your study schedule, your medical rotation schedule has kept you so busy, I'm going to mention a schedule for that. So first, I'm going to start with for those who are busy. Busy means 60 plus hours a week you have to give to some worldly activity. All right? Uh, if you're busy, the first thing you should do. I mean, obviously, it's understood you still fast, you still pray your prayers, right? The extra things you can do in this month is first, really focus on your heart consciousness while walking through the corridors, while walking across campus, while doing the rounds. Your tongue might be busy talking about things related to your worldly profession. Your mind might be busy thinking about matters related to your worldly duty. But your heart, and and this is something that's really, you know, in our reach in this month of Ramadan, inshallah, if you try it, your heart should remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your heart should be thinking about the people of Gaza. Your heart should let yourself feel that hunger. Embrace that hunger. Your heart should be making silent dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your heart should be pleading with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your heart should be in a state of dhikr, remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. While the outward form of you, because remember there's the seen and the unseen, the material and the spiritual. So if due to the barak of Ramadan and the fast of Ramadan, we're more connected to the spiritual aspect in this month, Let your heart also be unfettered. Let it be alone. Don't let worldly concerns come into it. Don't let worldly issues come into it. Leave the heart for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whereas your tongue and your mind and your body might be busy with the work of the world. That's the first thing. The second thing is that as and when you can, right, there are many times when you're walking from one room to the other or, you know, busy, but your tongue is not being used, you're not talking with someone, you're not engaged in conversation, if your tongue happens to be free in a silent whisper, in an inaudible whisper, right, or if circumstance allows, if you want a light whisper audible only to your own self, 
do some dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and let that be natural. Right? And if you don't know enough dhikr yet to be able to do it naturally, okay, then learn a little bit. Do some tasbih, some subhanallah, do some la ilaha illallah, do some tahleel, do some tahmeed, alhamdulillah, do some takbir, Allahu Akbar. Send salawat on Nabi Kareem, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allahumma salli wa sallam wa barak ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa ummatihi ajma'een innaka hamidun majeed. Recite some Quran al Kareem if you know it. Make dua in English to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Think of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's names and call upon him with whatever names you know. Right? Ya Rahman, have mercy on me. Have mercy on the people of Gaza. Have mercy on this Ummah. Have mercy on us as an Ummah that we have failed to ha- rise up and defend those who were oppressed and those who were helpless. Make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala using His names. Make dua in any Arabic duas from the Quran so you know. Make dua in any language you know. Use your tongue when it is free to be used. Even while at work, while walking around, while running around campus. So the first thing was the heart, the second thing was the tongue. The third thing is that even if you're working 60 hours a week, you're on some crazy rotation, crazy shift, there will be one or two days that you will have a bit of downtime. That might be a weekend, that might be an off shift, that might be whatever it is. So even for the busy person, sometimes you will have downtime. Value that downtime. Remember, remember in that downtime where you are, you have fallen deep into the embrace of the sacred month of Ramadan. Remember that example I gave in the very beginning? Like you're standing inside the Kaaba. You're deep inside this month of Ramadan. Value this time. Value this month. And do something extra. Right? This would be the time then you would recite some Quran. If you're new to reciting Quran, then maybe pick some particular surah that you really try to develop a relationship with this month. Could be surah Yasin, could be surah Kaf, could be surah Mulk, might be a very good one for many of us. Could be Khair, there, I mean, that could be a very long discussion. I want you to be natural. If you don't know anything, just explore, just dive in, pick anything, right? Pick something, read it, recite it, recite it with tajweed, hear its recitation with tajweed, try to mimic that. Improve its recitation, learn the translation, look at the commentary, think about its application, try to pen down, in if you have five minutes free, some thoughts, how you feel about that surah, what messages you can take from that surah, what guidance and guidelines you can adopt in your life from that surah. Have some connection with Qur'an al-Kareem in your downtime. And then in your downtime, have connection with Salah. Pray some extra salah, some nafl salah, maybe some qadha, some salah that is due upon us that we missed and we wasted that time and gave it to the dunya. Take it right back from the dunya and give it back to salah. Pray salatul haja, pray salatul istikhara. So this will lead to my third thing, the next thing I will say. So first is heart, second was tongue, third is Quran, fourth is salah, fifth dua. So there are a few special du'as if you can try to make this month. One is called Sayyid al I'm going to say it quickly because you can research all this on the internet very quickly if you're not aware of it yet. Sayyid al A special du'a. This is such a special du'a that Sayyidina Rasulullah Wasallam gave it the name Sayyid. It's like you can call it the king of istighfar. The king, the, the supreme way of seeking the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahu Akbar. So supreme sinners like us and then Allah Ta'ala bringing His supreme mercy and then Allah Ta'ala revealing to supremely beautiful beloved Prophet Wasallam to teach us the supreme way of seeking forgiveness and you and me are going to use that this month? Hmm? Say the istighfar every day. There's no, even if you're making 80 hour shift, there's no way you don't have the 60 seconds it takes uh, to make this dua heartfelt inshallah. Say the istighfar. You can make the du'a of istikhara every day. The Mashaykh of Bukhara and Samarkand, they used to make du'a of istikhara every day just for, with, with, they make the intention that every day I have decisions to make. Every day I have reflections and thought processes that will lead to me making a decision. So they would make that every day. Then if you look up, there's another, there's, you will find it, it's called Salatul Haja, but there's a du'a after it. That means that Again, Nabi Akram Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us that if you have a need called a hajat, right? You can make this special pray two rakahs salah. And technically, if, even if you can't pray two rakahs, you can still make this dua. And there's a small, it's a tiny paragraph, right? 
Okay, you don't have a need. There are plenty of people who have a need. Make it for them. I'm praying Sato Hajjab Ya Allah today. I don't pray to you for my need. I pray to you for the need of the people of Gaza. Hmm? I tell this story repeatedly. A young man, he came in he, many months ago. Wait, in October. October. This is March. In October, he came and told me that I started praying tahajjud. Why? Because I've never prayed tahajjud to make dua for myself, but I need to make dua for the people of Gaza. So I said, I have to wake up at tahajjud so that I can make dua for them. Allahu Akbar. Hmm? So you have to feel it. Never let We can never let ourselves have hollow activism. We cannot be empty activism. We have to give life to that activism through our heartfelt du'as to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the last thing is to send salawat on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Something I mentioned you could do with your tongue, but also in your dedicated time, you can do it in a more heartfelt way. So this is just a introduction. The topic of Ramadan is vast. The topic of Ramadan is deep. But as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Quran, ayyama ma'dudat, the days are limited. So you want to value this time. Let yourself flow deeper into the month of Ramadan and connect your heart to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this Ramadan the best Ramadan of our life. And we make this dua every year. But we make a special dua this year that you Allah make you make this the best Ramadan for the Ummah this life. May there be openings. May there be transformations. May there be unveilings and up up of ways for sukoon and peace and itminan and serenity for the entire Ummah in this month of Ramadan. And Ya Allah, we ask that you send your special Rahmah. So we'll end with the dua. Subhanallah wa alhamdulillah wa la ilaha illa Allah wa Allahu Akbar. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa ummatihi ajma'een. Innaka hamidun majeed. Rabbana la tuzikulubana ba'da id hadaytana wa hablana min ladunka rahmah. Innaka anta al-wahhab. Rabbi gfir wa arham wa anta khairu rahimeen. Ya Allah Rabbi Kareem, you are so kind and loving to us that you have gifted us this month of Ramadan again. Ya Rabbi Kareem, and again we have come to you in a state of utter want, in a state of utter need. Ya Rabbi Kareem, we ask you first and foremost, Ya Rabbi, Allahumma inna nas'alukam iyaka, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we ask you to increase us in our connection with you, our closeness to you, our faith in you, our certainty in you. Increase us in our iman and our yaqeen. Grant us istiqamat on deen. Ya Rabbi Kareem, let us always and ever feel your aware presence and your mercy and your blessings and your guidance in our heart, in our mind, in our life, Ya Rabbi Kareem. Ya Rabbi Kareem, if we ever forget, remind us. If we ever fall, Ya Rabbi, pick us up. Ya Rabbi Kareem, if we ever go astray, guide us. Ya Rabbi, in the same way that you have gifted us this month of Ramadan and give us tawfiq to fast, the fard fast of Ramadan. Ya Allah, give us and decree for us, Ya Rabbi, that we will fulfill every obligation in deen, every fard and wajib in deen. We will follow the sunnahs of Nabi Akrim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Ya Rabbi Kareem increase our connection to Quran put barakah in our time take us out from our mindless surfing take us out from our futile actions take us out from our delusional recreation and entertainment and let us dedicate this month Ya Rabbi Kareem and as much of the time in this month Ya Rabbi we have to you Ya Rabbi to worship of you remembrance of you help us Ya Rabbi help us Ya Rabbi we are weak Ya Rabbi make us strong Ya Rabbi Kareem and Ya Allah increase us in our connection with Quran our recitation of Quran our understanding of Quran our reflection of Quran our memorization of Quran our living our life according to Quran and Ya Rabbi Kareem increase us in our empathy Ya Rab. Ya Rab, for already for decades it is our own fault Ya Rab. we were desensitized Ya Rab. we became passive Ya Rab. we became inactive Ya Rab. we allowed the forces of Zulm to become strong while allowing ourselves to become weak forgive us for this sin Ya Rab. let us change our life change our orientation, transform our heart. Let us realize now, Ya Rab, that we live in a world of good and evil. Let us always be in the side of good. Let us help others to be protected from evil. Ya Rab, give us the strength to even guide the evil out of its evil and bring it into good, Ya Rabbi Kareem. Let us dedicate our whole life and lifetime for this cause, Ya Rabbi Kareem, and give us the knowledge to do it. Give us the strength to do it. Give us the istiqamah to do it. 
Send your hidayah upon us to do it. And yet we make dua for the Ahlul Ghazza, the Ahlul Philistine, all the Muslimin, Muta'athirin. Yet in Bikrim, they sit in suhoor and iftar, not only without food, but without limbs, without strength, without family members, without their loved ones, Ya Rab. Ya Rab Bikrim, whereas you have given us every blessing, every bounty, every comfort, every ease, every peace, we are unworthy, Ya Rab Bikrim. Ya Rab, they are truly worthy, Ya Allah. We are your unworthy ones, but we are making dua for them. Send your mother the Nusrat upon them. Send your unseen help and succor to them. Send your victory to them. Send protection to them. Ya Rabbi, can breathe their light when they are surrounded by darkness. Be Send a tender mercy of yours into their heart to give them happiness, Ya Rabbi, when they are surrounded by sadness. And Ya Rabbi, let us learn from their infinite strength. Let us learn from their incredible sabr. Let us learn from their tawakkul and yaqeen. Ya Rabbi, can forgive us for all the times that we became lax, we became weak, we became lazy in deen, yet it became let this Ramadan be a kafara for that, let it be an expiation for that yet it became we make dua for all the students and professionals Ya Rab, who are struggling to come closer to you, who are hoping to become closer to you in this month, yet it became put ease in their worldly activities ease in their professional responsibilities grant them the maximum barakah in this month, so that they can get the maximum value from their time yet we ask that you accept all the duas from all the hearts and the tongues of the listeners, Ya Rabbi, grant us all that we wish and all that you know to be best for us and all the khair that Nabi Akrim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to pray for you. Ya Rabbi, if anyone from this ummah on this earth is making a dua that is pleasing to you, acceptable to you, we say ameen on their duas, Ya Rabbi. Grant the duas of all of the ummah, Ya Rabbi Kareem. Rabbana takambal minna innaka anta sameer alim wa tubu alayna innaka anta tawabu rahim wa sallallahu ta'ala ala Habibihi Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa ummatihi ajma'in bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahimin. Ameen.